Hi everybody, welcome to the monthly astrology snapshot. My name is Paula Shaw and I am bringing to you another overview of the upcoming lunar month, which will begin at the new moon in Aries on the 21st or 22nd of March, depending where you are in the world. So this is another incredible lunar month. This is the first lunar month of the astrological new year which always begins when the sun moves into Aries. So we've begun a completely new cycle. I always find that the year begins around now for me. I always find when the sun moves into Aries, I notice something's renewing in my life and especially at the new moon in Aries, which always comes around this time. But what's really incredible about this next few days at the beginning of this lunar month is that it's equinox, which happens just hours before the exact moment of the equinox. And the March equinox is the um, time where the sun is in a certain pattern with the earth, where the days are equal to the nights. And it's not exact, but it's, it's more equal. And so it is a time when the seasons start to turn and we start to move towards the next season which is the opposite on northern and southern hemispheres but it's a new time and when there's the equal day and night which is around these few days it there's a magic in the air and what makes it even more magical at this time is this new moon happening like i said within hours of the equinox so it's this double boost of newness a double boost of new cycles all planets are still direct and they've been direct for weeks now, which adds in another level of this everything moving forwards, this quickening, this sense of rapid change, like we can't keep up. And at just hours after the new moon in Aries, we have Pluto moving into Aquarius, which is heralding you know a completely new era a new a new chapter for humanity and it's a big one so at the beginning of this lunar month in these few days if you're feeling this amplification if you're feeling the quickening if you're feeling new energy coming in this is a beautiful time honestly to sit in ceremony to stop and feel internally what wants to initiate so remember this is in Aries Aries is the first sign in the zodiac Aries is the primal initial impulse of life of creation Aries does not look back Aries is just moving forwards and is only interested in creating in initiating activating beginning seeding in life so you can see all of these cycles converging in at these few days it is potent it is potent with magic with potential for you to stop and seed in something at the new moon and the new moon is uh, exact on the 21st 22nd and what uh, some ancient cultures would do to celebrate that newness is they would actually wait until they could see the first crescent of the moon and that's when they would seed in. I have always felt at the dark of the moon when it's completely black is one of the most potent times to sit and really go deep into your inner space and your inner ritual. But if that's not happening for you or you're watching this late, and it's just a few days after the 21st, 22nd. Remember, Pluto moves into Aquarius on the 23rd, all over the world, same date. Then you can really ride the energy of those few days following. And keep in mind that next lunar month, the new moon again in the next lunar month will be in Aries and it will be a solar new moon eclipse. Next month is eclipse season. Very quickly on eclipses, they're not as intense as what they were last year, but eclipses are eclipses and we will feel it. And so what you're seeding in at this new moon, if you can ride the energy, what you're 
And when I say seeding, you know, I want to make it clear that you're not manipulating reality. I always advise and how I work with the lunar cycles as a, as a strong spiritual practice, actually, is I look for what's coming up. I listen and it really can become a profound mindfulness practice. Mindfulness being fully with the moment as it is. So if you aren't already engaged in lunar work, this is one of the most beautiful ways to get in touch with your own spiritual soul development, human development, evolutionary path. It truly it is um, because it's not based in religion. You don't have to believe in something. You're just being in harmony with the cycles of nature that we're all connected to. We all can see the moon. It's the same for us everywhere. It's always facing Earth. So really take a moment. Be aware of the bigger cycles that I'm sharing with you. Understand it's Aries. Understand it's a new season. Understand that it's a new astrological year. And harness that creative life original pulse of initiating new life with Aries and really sit with it. In my written snapshot, I've got some beautiful suggestions for you to dive deep into ritual and some really important questions to ask yourself. This can be a potent time to seed in new vows, commitments, dedications to how you want to be, how you want to navigate these changing paradigms, these changing eras. Pluto moving into Aquarius is massive. The last time Pluto changed signs was when it moved into Capricorn. And when it moved into Capricorn, it was 2008. And this was when that the, the global financial crisis was really kicking off. Now we've got Pluto making its first ingress into Capricorn, uh, into Aquarius. And we've already seen some big changes in the field. I'm not going to get into all the politics and banking, but things are shifting out there. It's so obvious. Pluto will oscillate between Aquarius and Capricorn until next year. So we're going to be still dealing with these old themes, with Pluto breaking down, decomposing, with the ultimate intention of resurrecting everything still to do with Capricorn. But we're going to get glimpses of what Pluto in Aquarius wants to start bringing into the collective story. I've gone deep into this as well in the written section. If you want to immerse yourself more into these themes, it's actually I've taken a snippet from my 2023 forecast, astrology forecast. And it is, you know, I thought, why, why write it again? It's so clear in that piece, you know, um, what have I got here? Pluto and Aquarius will begin unearthing and revealing to us what needs to be detoxed, purified and resurrected so that we can rebuild a society that is fairer and taking into more consideration the collective. This is Aquarius. Aquarius is about humanity, the whole of humanity. And we may see more decentralization of traditional power paradigms as those who have been oppressed may begin gaining more power. Now, this cycle is going to be in action for 20 years. So it's not all happening at once. But when it moves into the first degree, which is now, that's when things amplify. And when Pluto is in the final degree, which it has been of Capricorn, it will also amplify those themes. So, you know, it's really interesting that um, I will bring in the banking thing, this, the um, Silicon Valley Bank. So it's big banking and it's tech. It's Pluto in Capricorn and Aquarius. You cannot make this stuff up. So, you know, observe what's going on, but don't freak out. The last full moon was in Virgo and we were talking about when you let go of the busyness of your mind and you stop focusing on the crazy tornado, the quickening, the speeding up, and you come back to what is pure within you and sacred, that is when you're potent. And that to me is the only way to navigate skillfully these changing times, the quickening. It's not going to slow down. 
as I wrote at the beginning of the year, the number one strategy I would recommend is to consciously increase your capacity for change, increase your capacity for evolution. You'll know you're not in that space when you're experiencing fear and anxiety. And that's when you need to stop, go into nature, do whatever your practices are. There's no one special formula. That is very Pluto in Aquarius. There's no one special way that works for everybody. You must find your own way. Use technology, Aquarius, to find solutions. Go to the internet, get online, engage with a course. Trust your intuition, though. There's so much out there and people are just, you know, sharing all their things and it's great. Find the ones you can hear. Find the ones that resonate with your heart and listen, there's no one formula. Aquarius is this more fairy distribution of everything. And that means there's not just one way fits all. There is this approaching things, not just being an expert in one thing, but opening yourself up to mastering. And I don't mean high, high level, but being really good at more than one thing. And bringing that together is what's going to make you superior, say, to um, AI, to predictive technology, is to diversify your skill set and to really, you know, for example, if you're in corporate, you can be a great person at tasks and um, programming, let's just say, but can you also manage and deal really well with people? This is what's going to start really uh, opening us up to evolve as a human. Pluto into Aquarius wants you to evolve. Pluto wants to awaken and transform the deep life force and bring it up through the whole energy system. And Aquarius is symbolic of the awakening through the crown chakra. We are all connected. We are connected to the cosmic universe. This is very Aquarius. We're going to see so much technology advancements and our relationship to the universe and the quantum levels. I would not be surprised if we have new laws that are resurrected or um, emerged through this time. It Honestly, it is so exciting. However, this year with the Pluto oscillating between Capricorn and Aquarius, it will feel uncomfortable. Again, increase your capacity for change. Change is never comfortable. If you get out of good and bad, you'll see that discomfort is a natural part of the human experience. And this year, you can really embrace that. And, and in fact, take a breath, get out of the chaos, step back in, increase your capacity, and you might even enjoy it. I personally have moments where I oscillate between, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? Are we going to be okay? To this is so exciting. What is possible here? You know, um, yeah. So Pluto wants to bring in more progressive politics, which I feel is a relief in when you think about the quickening of technology and all of the ethical implications that are involved. Like we do need to think about this. And Aquarius really wants to protect the collective, not just the individual. So, so exciting. I, I'm so looking forward to how this all manifests. Another key thing I've written about that stood out to me was the Venus Uranus conjunction this lunar month, which is um, happening in Taurus on the 30th of March. So a week. This conjunction will be active a few days either side of that date. And, you know, what is Venus? So Venus rules over what is beautiful and harmonious for the human experience. And I think we can all agree that the last couple of years hasn't really had that as a focus and it hasn't been really accessible for everybody. We've been locked down. We've been just going through so much. When Venus comes into a conjunction with Uranus, which doesn't happen every month, it's like once every year and so so on, what we can experience is this innovation Uranus, this um, pattern interrupt with an intention of evolution. So Uranus is the planet of shaking it up, waking it up, the iterations that are necessary for evolution. So with Venus coming in in Taurus, the so Taurus represents resources, the earth, finances. 
Uranus is halfway through a cycle of disrupting and innovating our whole relationship to everything to do with Taurus, finances, resources, what we value, how we value things, what really matters. Venus coming into this conjunction in context of the greater cycles that are at play, I find it a relief because this could really bring in a powerful dynamic of actually giving us some reprieve and actually giving us another way to look at what feels good about being a human. Maybe there's some relief or insights into how the financial systems are going to evolve. I really hope so because I have a feeling a lot of people are worried about this and I think that's not incorrect but hopefully this Venus-Uranus conjunction in Taurus can really bring the potential for new and innovative ways of being with money, wealth, resources, the earth and maybe some healing, maybe bringing a little bit more new ways of being with beauty and harmony in the world. So notice what's happening around the March, March the 30th for you. The other date that was really strong, actually, no, I'll go to the next key uh, event will be the full moon in Libra. So what I noticed when I was looking at the astrology for this full moon is that it is actually... Um, sitting on its own and the moon at this full moon and I really had this intuitive sense that this could be a really beautiful time to just stop at that full moon and sit with yourself to sit with your inner world the moon represents our internal experience of reality how we feel about life and when the moon is in Libra and it's full this can be a culmination of everything to do with Libra, which is relationships, how things relate to each other. But I had the sense that this wasn't about just all of your relationships outside of you, but the relationship with yourself. Do you really love yourself? That is an easy thing to think about, but to truly experience is something else. And with what we've been going through, with the heavy karma that's been ripening at this time, with the collective shadow coming up and being dredged up as Pluto's been in the Anoretic, the final degree of Capricorn, the old ways, anything that we have wounding that's connected to old paradigms, old structures, old vertical top-down, I've said that so many times in the last few years, top-down, vertical, hierarchical, patriarchal structures has been being addressed. And this full moon is an opportunity for you to really come back to self-love, to really come back to your deep, beautiful relationship with yourself. So sit with it, take a moment, all of your other relationships, the quality of your relationships will be determined by the quality of the relationship you have with yourself. You want to heal relationships out there? Heal your relationship to those relationships. The new moon, as I've written about in the snapshot, you can easily just go to my website, soulfulguiding.com, or there's a link in my Instagram bio, um, easy to find. You can, I've dived deep into this new moon in Aries, which is initiating something really powerful about yourself. At that new moon, just to skip back for a moment in Aries, Chiron and Jupiter are in a conjunction. And this really speaks to the ability to heal an original wound, a wound that you were born with or that you were born into a situation that wounded you very early on, the oldest wound. There is an opportunity to seed something in at the new moon in Aries that boosts your courage and your sense of I'm born at the right time, I can handle what's going on in this world, I've got this. And then at the full moon in Libra, sit and feel what's blocking you or what's in the way of you expressing that impulse, that initiating creative impulse that wants to courageously manifest through you in this lifetime. Life is short, it is precious. And sitting with these lunar phases are purely a moment for you to stop, to go in, to understand what's going within, 
and to harness the things that are waking up and arising and getting stronger and to give space and safe passage for the things that need to die. Let them die every full moon. Let it go. And again, as I always say personally, I believe looking at what's changing, looking at what's coming up, notice the themes in your life. This is mindfulness. Mindfulness is literally not being so busy in your thoughts that you are able to observe what's really going on within and without. And from there, you can get into a profound conversation with reality, a very intimate relationship with life. And you can read the energies and how the cycles and the patterns and the karma is moving through your experience of life. But if you never stop and look within, and if you never stop listening to the monkey mind and the fears, you never have a space or experience that gap, you're not free to respond to your life in new and innovative ways. And you will find these times of great change very scary. This is a time where the practice of mindfulness, which we've been talking about for years now, we all have a sense of what mindfulness means. This is when we take the practice now of mindfulness, not just being a way to watch, you know, what's going on. That's one stage of mindfulness. I can see it and it's like, oh my God, what's happening? I hate that thought. What am I going to do now? So you get into the gap. Then you have an opportunity to respond to your life, to your inner thoughts, to others, to events, someone yelling at you, someone cutting in front of you. That is my biggest frustration. <laughs> you get to respond from a new place within you, not from the old habitual karmic loops that just keep creating more negative stuff. You are then a robot in essence. You're not anything new. There's no gap. Pluto moving into Aquarius is like expand, awaken, enlightenment enlightenment isn't just for cosmic magical beings it's for all of us it's your birthright it is actually so fundamental and with the quickening with the intensification you can practice this you do not have to run away from your life to do this unless you are in a position where you feel called to go somewhere to an ashram to a monastery to india to a beautiful retreat doesn't even have to be anything cosmic. Do it. But you don't have to. You can do it right now. Pluto and Aquarius is for the people, for humanity. It's not about ascension. It's about awareness, seeing clearly, opening your mind, opening your heart. Aquarius is not as driven by emotion, but emotion isn't always a good thing. Emotion can be connected to the busy mind can be fear and excitement, but feeling life is something else. I would say as Pluto's going into Aquarius, we'll find that we're moving into a time where we learn that we can care without being overly emotionally invested. That empathy isn't like, oh, I'm so feeling you. Empathy is truly this place where it's like, I can really imagine what it would be like for you. I don't have to be emotional and driven by crazy emotion, but I can feel care. Pluto and Aquarius is, some people are fearing, some astrologers that I've listened to or spoken to fear that Pluto and Aquarius is a time where we'll all be dry and intellectual. I actually feel we'll understand more what mindfulness is and more of how to care from a deeply, deeper place within. So right now, as these energies are amplifying, all planets are still direct and we're on the edge of eclipses, equinox, new moon in Aries, new astrological year, Pluto going into Aquarius, everything shifting. Saturn has just moved into Pisces. As I'm sure if you're listening to me, you're into astrology and you know that already. But what I want to share quickly about Saturn into a Pisces that I think is extremely amazing and cool and I wrote about this in the forecast for this year, was that once Saturn moves into Pisces, it shifts out of this challenging square that it has been in for an extended period of time than normal for this cycle, two years. This challenging square, push-pull between the old and the new, and that, that fight from the old paradigms to conserve, 
to keep these old ways because everybody on some level fears change and the conservative patterns we're seeing ripening the fears that they're, they're just amplifying trust in the bigger process or at least that's how I'm seeing it because I look at the cycles again Pluto going into that final degree of Capricorn which it's been for a um, weeks now amplifying all of this intensity of the old and Pluto will drop back into Capricorn there will be this um, not a push pull but the old conservative values trying to grip and white knuckle it please don't let go and so if you're seeing these things play out have faith open your heart and that's this actually leads me to the other um key aspect that i saw and there'll be more listen to other astrologers they'll all see it from beautiful different angles um but the sun jupiter conjunction in aries on the the 11th of april again this is active a few days either side but this is everything feeling larger than life. There is a shadow potentially to a Sun-Jupiter conjunction. So think the Sun and Jupiter are the biggest heavenly bodies in our solar system. They're the biggest. And so when these two come together and appear to be, we cannot see Jupiter. It's Jupiter is um, uh, under the rays of the Sun. So there's a few different ways that you can look at this. And I would always suggest see what's playing out for you personally. Um, but this conjunction can be that Jupiter loses power under the rays of the sun, and that the sun is dominant. It could also be that it's it's amplified. And what is Jupiter? It's about faith and positivity and the meaning of life. And the sun could be shining and beaming through that energy and really making everything seem larger than life, including your fears and your thoughts and your worries and the drama. So around the 11th of april i think that's just after the full moon yep just days after the full moon on the fifth sixth depending where you are in the world we'll have that conjunction so it'll be actually active uh in in a way at the full moon uh yeah in at the full moon so just be mindful you know be mindful of what's going on and don't don't buy into the drama that you may be seeing playing out in the external. And it could be a really beautiful time to just drop in to your inner beliefs. Jupiter can be religion. Jupiter is connected to um, the higher laws, you know, the laws that transcend our legal system, the law of karma, the law of cause and effect, uh, the law of the greater cycles at play. This is something that you could really tune into and just basically take some time out to sit in the sun and feel the, 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 the great grand quest that the human experience is. It is truly a big adventure that we're all on together right now. We are living through something incredible. Really, we are. And I just hope these monthly snapshots give you a sense of kind of the context and the, the weather that's, you know, the forecast of the cycles so that you can feel empowered, so you can ride these waves of great change and maybe even enjoy it. I'm really trying to do that more and more. And truly for me, studying astrology and looking at these cycles more and more, I'm just, okay, I feel like I can trust. And that is really Jupiter, to trust that there is a purpose to it all. So again, as I said, Next month is eclipse season, so whatever you work with through this lunar month, if you do work with it, or whatever you notice, you don't have to work with it, whatever you notice, observe how it plays out into that next lunar month. Like I said, we go into another new moon in Aries, which is an eclipse, so it's almost like life's like, okay, let's give it another boost. So write down what's coming up, or if you're doing ritual Keep note of what comes through. If you're working with Oracle cards, take a photo and then look again at the next new moon. So, yeah. So, you know, to wrap this up, life is moving fast. Uncertainty seems to be the new reality, but that is only a perception. If you can open and embrace it, look for the new. Always look for the ones that are keeping their hearts open no matter what's going on. 
be that, help someone, give someone a hug. Just don't buy into the fear because we are going to go through more changes, definitely in the next two years. So I wish you all well. I love doing these for you guys. I hope they support you. Just so much love to you all. And I will see you again in the next lunar month, which will be eclipse season. And I'll be bringing more tips for how to work consciously with it. Bye, everybody.